Well, look who's here this morning to join this discussion. The acerbic, if you'll accept oh, that geez. word, the acerbic David Barnson. You don't care about inflation. No market reaction to the inflation numbers. Hard to see any clear trend. What's your comment? It was 0% month over month. What do you want the market to do? The producer <laughs> prices have gone down well, in the most violent disinflation we've seen in my lifetime. Producer prices lead consumer prices. It's a very good report. 1.8% year over year is very low. And the CPI number yesterday showed disinflation and in energy inflation and in food normal month over month on a year 2.4 when we say hotter it was 0.1 more than expected all in apparel by the way what's the matter with you david it's a friday morning that is not a great so, so pleasant see <laughs> yeah, you right. have me on to give you facts that's what i'm here to do sometimes it, i just bring a little attitude usually in an acerbic fashion too oh, shall friendly. we move on yes let's do please it. stay there because you're with me for the hour you lucky guy all right tesla held their long-awaited robo-taxi event last night. Uh, what did we learn? Well, we got a timeline. Didn't think we'd get one. Musk says the cyber cab is two years away, and after that, the robo-van. Now's your chance, David, to be truly acerbic, because you don't care about Tesla and robo-taxis, do you? Um, as a consumer, I would love to see what happens in the future. As an investor, it's not investable for us. You know, he said we hope to start producing in 2027. Hope to. I mean, do you know how old you're going to be in 2027? I've got a good idea. Uh, this is a long way away. <laughs> and and the announcement's I, already nine years late. He, he promised this true. eight, nine years the ago. The funniest thing is he showed up for this an hour late. No, there was a medical emergency. Oh, I didn't know that. In the well, crowd. then that's not funny. Yes. Um, I'm, I didn't read that in any of the reports, so thank you for correcting me. I don't want to be insensitive. But my point being, it didn't execute well. The event didn't have the big splash that they wanted, and the stock is down accordingly. And you wouldn't touch the stock anyway. You're a, you're a dividend investor. No, and luckily we haven't because it's down almost 50% over the last couple of years. Ain't that the truth. All right, thanks very much. Stay there, please. You're with me for the hour. Here's David. It's your chance now. This is dividend pick time, and you're picking J.P. Morgan. What's so good about it? I picked JP Morgan because they just did earnings today. Yep. I've owned it for 15 years. We bought it at $30. It's at 220 Wells Fargo, which Taylor talked about, is up 100% since financial crisis. JP Morgan's up 700%. That's how much better of a bank they are than the second, third, fourth best banks in the world. They, the dividend was 20 cents a year in 2009. It's five dollars a year now. The dividend is up 25 times. So I picked this stock and I'm talking so long about it because yeah. it's an opportunity to explain to my friend Stuart Varney the benefit <laughs> oh, I know of how capital gains oh, 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 come from yeah. dividend growth. Right, right. The dividend growth indicates right. the direction of a well-run company. They have the best CEO in America, Jamie Dimon. And J.P. Morgan has been an incredible success story of dividend growth. And you're telling me that the, cap the value of J.P. Morgan Chase has gone up more than Microsoft in the same period. In, in, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm a fool to have invested in Microsoft and not J.P. No, no, Morgan. No, no, no. Microsoft's been a huge success, too. I'm trying to explain that Microsoft went 16 years that it didn't go up at all, from 2000 to 2016. Oh, I know that. Yes. You know, you oh, know what I'm referring to. Now, J.P. Morgan had to go through financial crisis. They did better than the others. But the dividend dividend indicated that they were growing and improving the business. And then along the way, we were also receiving the dividend. So now, if you bought the stock at $30, you're getting five bucks a year. You have a 20% dividend per year on what you paid for the stock and your capital gain is 700%. Okay, moving swiftly along to the second dividend play from David, Truist Financial. Which we love this name and I put it in for you because <laughs> JP Morgan's a lower yielder now. Truist is paying 5% now. It's also up, by the way, about 70% from its bottom. Remember when Silicon Valley Bank yep. died, Truist was facing troubles. They're now up quite a bit and paying 5%. At 43, they pay. 5%? Yes, they do. At 43, they're paying 5%. Where at our cost, it was about 7%. Not bad at all. Yes, nice sir. picks. Thank you, David. Quickly, David, here's your chance to uh, pass judgment on the scatter shot of tax cuts. Well, look, I'm really a big favor of cutting the rates for everyone, broad-based tax cuts. Right. I'm a Reaganite. I'm a supply-sider. Art Laffer has taught me a lot here, and these selected tax cuts are a bad idea. This one on, on uh, auto interest is insane. Um, it distorts behavior. It causes people to use borrowed money instead of paying cash. It distorts incentives. It's a very bad idea. It'll never happen. So we'll leave it at that. All right. Thanks, David. David, thank you very much for being on the show. The acerbic Barnson will be a back. Pleasure. He'll be back. Yes, <laughs> thanks so much.